Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video, you should be able to evaluate the impact of environmental change on the distribution of a species, and this is for triple biology higher tier students only. Now I should just point out that you're not required to learn any specific organisms. In the specification, it states that you'll be given information to answer questions. So the examples I show you in this video are simply to illustrate the key ideas. In a previous video, we saw that the distribution of a species can depend on a number of different abiotic or non-living factors. And I'm showing you three of these abiotic factors here. These are the temperature, the availability of water, and the composition of gases in the atmosphere. Now a key fact is that changes in abiotic factors can also affect the distribution of a species. And some of these changes can be due to geography. I'm showing an example here. The desert fox lives in North Africa and it's adapted to live in the hot conditions of the desert. As you can see, the desert fox has large ears. These increase the surface area of the fox, allowing it to lose heat more easily. Now, we do not find the desert fox in Europe where conditions are cooler. Instead, we find the red fox, which is adapted to live in cooler conditions than the desert fox. As we move further north, then the red fox eventually disappears and instead we find the arctic fox. The arctic fox is adapted to live in the extremely cold conditions around the arctic circle. You'll notice that the arctic fox has very small ears. These reduce the surface area, which means that less heat's lost to the air. Okay, so as you can see, temperature shows geographic variation. We can see the same effect with the availability of water. In the desert, we find plants adapted to live where water is scarce. For example, these cacti, which are found in the deserts of America. However, we do not find cacti in regions where water is more plentiful. Instead, we find plants adapted to living in wetter conditions, such as these ferns. Okay, now as well as geographic variation, abiotic factors can also show seasonal variation, and this can affect populations of species. I'm showing you here wildebeest in Africa. Every year, huge numbers of wildebeest migrate across Africa, and these animals are following the rainfall patterns in search of better grazing land. Many species of bird also migrate huge distances. For example, swallows breed in the summer in the UK. They then migrate to the warm conditions of Africa during the winter months. Bats also migrate. For example, millions of bats migrate south from the United States to spend the winter in Mexico where the conditions are warmer. Okay, now abiotic factors can also be influenced by human activity. And a good example are gases in the atmosphere. I'm showing you here two species of lichen, and you may have seen these growing on rocks or on trees. Lichens are extremely sensitive to the gas sulfur dioxide, which can be produced by burning fossil fuels. This means that we find the largest numbers of lichens where the air is unpolluted. Human activity can also affect the levels of gases dissolved in water. For example, if sewage is allowed into streams, then this can cause the level of dissolved oxygen to drop. Organisms such as mayfly nymphs cannot live in conditions of low oxygen, so the populations of species such as this can fall. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on the impact of environmental change in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.